Welcome everyone to the first ever, I'm going to say it, um, ever church ever of any kind weekend stay K online. I don't know if that's actually true, but I think we should claim it as Christ City Church. So it's lovely to have you here. Thank you for uh, coming along and uh, for being here on this uh, on Friday night as we as we kick things off. It's, uh, it's great to have you here. Uh, I think you all know me, but if you don't, uh, I did just cut my hair and have a shave after my sea swim. So I'm feeling very fresh for this weekend uh, and I'm very delighted with the care pack. Now, I want everyone in the chat pane to tell us what they like the most about the uh, about the care packs. If you haven't already, uh, we've had a few little answers. Now, I also say do not eat the after eights and do not eat the Maltesers because they are for later. So was it the cookies? Was it the book? Uh, was it the little booklet? <laughs> I hope not. Uh, the various things. So in the chat pane, let us know what was your favorite uh, item. Bring back the beard. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, it was just developing there. The beard is a favorite with Annabelle, not a favorite with the wife. And you can guess which side I therefore go for when it comes to beard choosing. Um, good. Okay, great. Uh, there we go. Lovely book. Okay, good. After eight, some Maltesers are gone. Oh, Connor Barrett, how dare you? The pumpkin cookie. Yes, wonderful. Karina. Harry Bowes says Tutty. Wonderful. Uh, I know Isaac loved the Nature Valley Bar too. Yeah, you wish uh, you wish you could have had it, don't you? Okay. Um, so you're all very welcome. It's lovely to have you here. I hope you're coming expectant for what God's going to do. And uh, we trust that God will meet with us all in different ways. And uh, as we were just praying in the, uh, in the, in the prepare meeting just to prepare ourselves, Joan was praying that God would fulfill his purposes for this weekend for each of us, which is a wonderful prayer. Um, the purpose of the weekend, I think we've, we've shared this, but uh, the whole point of the weekend really is twofold. Firstly, to have a load of fun. Uh, it's disappointing that we can't be together in person and uh, be in Castle Daily, but it doesn't mean we can't have fun. And uh, we never take ourselves seriously. That's one of our little slogans, isn't it, at Christ City Church? We try to take God seriously, but not ourselves seriously. So hopefully we can have a lot of fun and uh, connect with your buddies and, and have some, uh, some time on Zoom and, and, and messaging each other. And the second side of it is to become a caring church or learn more what it is to be a caring church. Um, that's specific to COVID where we, we need extra care, don't we, at this time in our different ways, but also more generally, how do we inhabit and live out our identity uh, as a church, as a body that cares for one another and as a family that cares for one another? So we've been praying that God would put deep in our DNA that we are a caring church because we worship a caring God. In the Old Testament, they had cities of refuge for people that had made a mess and they needed somewhere to kind of escape and be taken care of. And that's a great vision for the church, isn't it? A place where people that have made a mess come and know they're taken care of. And so let's pray that God forms us to be that city of refuge uh, where we can be cared for. So just a few things about the format of the weekend. Uh, again, I think this has um, been, been shared so far, but, um, but just in case uh, you've missed any of this stuff, it's probably good for, for you to know. Um, the first thing is that uh, it's an opt-in timetable. So we don't expect everyone to do everything. We know Zoom can be tiring, so opt-in to what works for you. Um, the second thing is if you've got a buddy, uh, please connect with them for a walk outside, messaging on WhatsApp, a quick 30 minutes on Zoom to pray for one another, cook them a meal, make write them a card. Think of ways to be creative, to bless a buddy if you have a buddy. Um, main sessions, all these sessions will be around one hour long and we'll include breakout rooms. So we have one tonight, one tomorrow morning, and then the Sunday service. Um, the Sunday service won't include breakout rooms, but uh, these sessions will. Um, and afterwards, there's going to be a 15-minute Q&A. Uh, so we're going to have the final song. And if you then want to chat with Joan about any of the things that have been raised, we haven't had time. There's just a 15-minute open Q&A for you to stay and unmute yourself. Uh, Joan has asked, which I think is a great suggestion, so she knows if you could put your name, your actual name. I know we have nicknames for each other, but like just so she knows who to call on or, or who's responding. So um, just put your name, like Steve or Joan or whoever, on the Zoom because it will help her. Uh, and do use the chat, of course, to ask questions throughout. We hope it's quite interactive. Um, a few other things to let you know about. Uh, Padlet. 
so what we're going to try and do is uh, you got you got the email hopefully uh, just now, and in here we have a thing called the Padlet. Okay, and we have a link for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So here is the Friday Padlet. Look at that! Look at that wonderful man, isn't he wonderful? Uh, so that is uh, what you, if you have something you you sense God speaking, if you have a reflection, if you um, want to made a fun picture, if you have a Bible verse, a prayer, or if there's a chance for feedback, you know, Q&A and, and, and responding to a question Jonah's given, we want you to try and use that. So if everyone could just try and click on that Padlet link that I've put in the, uh, the chat, um, there's me practicing with the staff team uh, on uh, on Tuesday. Uh, morning, I think it was a Monday morning. So, um, so yeah, do, uh, do do find the Padlet, and we will try and use that. We'll see. We've never used it before, but I think it could be it could be a positive uh, a positive thing. Um, so yeah, for, for various different things, yeah, a bit of fun as well. Um, and there's also a photo challenge. So um, it was written in your in your booklet uh, that you should have got. Um, the, that there's a bit of fun that Marco and Hannah are going to be organising a photo challenge. And you need to have put that, uh, sent your photos through to Hannah at Hannah at ChristCityChurch.ie by tomorrow night, because it's then going to be the icebreaker on Sunday. And the idea is you create a photo, maybe a selfie, or maybe just something around the themes of creation, uh, community or friendship and hope. And if you're a child and you want to get involved around animals. So it's just three, three themes, creation, friendship and hope. Get a photo this weekend, put it on Padlet, send it through to Hannah at ChristCityChurch.ie, and then we will use that as our icebreaker. Um, we'd love to select that. Hopefully it's a bit of fun, and uh, particularly for those of you that are, are creative, and for those of you that aren't as well, you know, no harm done. Um, so, uh, yeah, there, there were the themes there. Now, it is not a uh, stay K without after rates. For those of you that have been part of the church for a while, you will know, and I put you all on the screen, that the opening uh, to the to the weekend away is always a game that it's basically because I'm actually very good at it. And you put the oh, mine's melting. I might not be so good. You put the after eight, okay? And so for those of you that won, we're going to have four people competing in a moment on the screen who won. You put the after eight on your forehead like this, okay? And then without using any hands, you you get it. Look at that. Look at that. I don't even know how that sounds, but I am. Oh, he just escaped me. Look at that. Okay, so that's what you got to do, and we're going to have a challenge. So what we like in the chat pane, if uh, if if four people or as many I guess can want can just volunteer and say they're up for it, then Vanessa is going to. Uh, uh, yeah, I do spend my Sunday mornings practicing, and what's the problem with that? Um, Vanessa is going to select four people. So who wants to have a go? And don't be shy now. Come on, bit of Friday night fun of getting the after eight from your forehead to your mouth. Uh, let's have a few volunteers. I'm seeing Zosha saying she's keen. Look at it. She's got a fringe. She's, she's, she's struggling with her fringe. Uh, we've definitely got a Tati there who's getting involved. Um, anyone? Come on, we need some people. I'll have a go. Justin, great. Daniel Bracco, great. Jez, I love it, uh, but not with an after eight. Fine, whatever you'd like. We need one more. So we've got Justin, Dan, maybe a female. Come on, we can't have three men. Ah, good. Good, Bex. Okay, so Vanessa is going to uh, hopefully put you on the screen now. And uh, I think that do I need to stop sharing, Vanessa, or do I just share in your... You should uh, spotlight the relevant people. So Daniel, Rebecca, Jez. Oh, we've also got Katie is in as well. So if we can do five. Um, do I need to stop sharing, Vanessa? Okay, stop sharing. So hopefully on your screen, as I stop sharing, Vanessa's going to, 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 to spotlight the relevant people. So I'll say them again if you can find them. Uh, it is Justin. Ready to go. Look at him. You don't want to get there too early, Justin. It starts to melt. Jez is like schoolboy era. He's never done this before. He's like melting. It's like <laughs> sticking to his forehead right now. He's like wedging. He's never going to move that thing. <laughs> Rebecca uh, Sharp um, uh, is also in. So she's in. Sharon and Jez is in. And I'm, I'm glad I've there... my face before this session. <laughs> okay, you ready? So yeah, hopefully you've got Justin, Jez, Rebecca, and uh, Daniel. On your marks. Daniel, are you engaged? Have you got your after eight? 
No, he hasn't. Okay, we need someone else. Uh, oh, he would if he still had them, I see. We're in. Okay, Katie. Where's Katie? I can't see Katie. Where is she? Oh, well. <laughs> we'll go with the three. On your marks. Get set. Go. Oh, well. No. <laughs> Jez is, yeah, he's very animated. Justin <laughs> hasn't actually moved. I'm Jez here. has come to the floor. Uh, Bex is shaking her head a lot. Uh, look, has Katie gone in? <laughs> no, Katie's dropped. So we've had another disaster. Uh, so she she's struggling there. Um, there we go. Let's have a look. Let's just have a look there. Oh, look, there's Katie Allen. She's having a go. No, absolute disaster. Right, oh. let's, let's let's zoom in on on Justin. There we go. Oh, Justin lost lost it. Okay, let's pull it on uh, on 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 oh. Jeff. Okay, that is just magnificent. Look at that. They're all going flying there. No, okay. Well, we're just going to have to say that, that these guys are not as gifted as yours truly. Rebecca's done it. I've lost her on my screen. Has Rebecca done it? Do we miss the glorious moment, Rebecca? Oh, a little round of applause, everyone, for Rebecca. Good, good job. Uh, super. Well done. So it's not an after uh, Yeah, there we go. Now, tomorrow morning, if you've already eaten your Maltesers, firstly, shame on you. And secondly, we're going to do the Maltese again tomorrow. So yeah, you have time to go and get a, uh, a you know, to go and get a, to go and get some Maltese uh, and get in the game for tomorrow. So that's uh, that's going to happen tomorrow. Um, okay, let me pray, and uh, then we. One of the things we always do on the stay K is, or on the weekend away normally, is hear from different people and get to know different people, which is a real joy of the weekend, isn't it? And so each session, we're going to have someone share their testimony just briefly, and then we're going to pray for them. Just because one of the things about COVID is we don't get to hear and chat and see and, and know everyone and, and how people are doing. So this was one idea that we would just hear each session, one person's uh, story. And for each person, we ask them to prepare um, four things. So Katty's doing it today. Uh, how has the last six months been for you? So the good and the bad of, of, of the last six months. Uh, what has God been teaching you? Uh, what encouragement do you have for the church? And how can the church pray for you? And we hope it's a sort of representative thing that we might you know, get to know other people and ask similar questions through the weekend. How, how the last six months have been? What has God been teaching you? Uh, what has been your encouragement? What would be your encouragement to the church? And how can the church be praying? So let me uh, pray, not just for Cassie, but for, for, for all of us. And then, uh, and then I'll, I'll, I'll hand over to her. So just take a moment and uh, be still, and then I'll pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the chance to be together and to consider who you are and who we are in light of you. Uh, that you are a great caring God and that we are people that you've called and gifted and enabled by your spirit to care for one another. We thank you for Kathy and we pray you bless her now as she shares and bless us all this weekend that you speak to us and encourage us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, guys. Um, so my name is Kathy and... I have been part of the church for about a year or so. And yep, so in reflection of the last six months, at first I was really disappointed because I was supposed to start a job as an English language teacher in DCU. It was only meant to last for a few months, but I was hoping to use that opportunity to apply for full-time positions. And so be allowed to stay in Ireland after my visa, my visa expires next year. On the other hand, I was able to focus on my undergrad, which I finished in May. And then I got offered the opportunity to babysit Joy four days a week for Paola, whom you might know. And I adored doing that. Um, then this was all during our first lockdown. And also during that time, my grandmother passed away. Um, so. Joy and her family were an amazing support for me at that time and I'm just super grateful both to them and to God for putting this family there for me at the right time. Um, so I am still looking for a job 
uh, but in the meantime, I'm delighted to have moved back in with my younger brother. And, you know, just to be able to stay together as we face the second lockdown. He's in his final year in college and, you know, we're both away from our family in our home country, which is Ecuador. And we'll probably be stuck here for the foreseeable future. Um, so, yeah, the second thing over this time, God has been teaching me a lot of patience and a lot of trusting in him, you know, to humble myself, to learn that I am not in control and that rather than try to seize what I think I'm in control of, I should hand over to him because he knows better than I do. And I'm just going to read for you a little bit of Proverbs 16, which I really liked. Uh, so verse nine says, the heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. And then verse 33, the lot is cast into the lap, but it's every decision is from the Lord. You know, just the point of he is in control and I should hand over. Then also the different series we've been doing in church for the past few months have been really helpful in teaching me that I have a lot more time than I thought I did. So I took the lockdown as an opportunity to declutter and refocus on the things that are truly important. One of the verses that has illustrated a good example of this for me has been 1 Kings 8, 18 which is talking about David's desire to build God's temple and God's plan to hand over that responsibility to Solomon, his son. Uh, so I'm going to read verse 18. It says, But the Lord said to David, my father, whereas it was in your heart to build a house for my name, you did well that it was in your heart. Uh, the next thing is my encouragement to the church. Um, which is even though we're, we're all struggling and the pandemic has been difficult for us all in different aspects, I think it's important to acknowledge how people are trying their best in their own way, even if our coping methods seem odd to others. So, you know, just appreciating each other and how we are different and embrace our differences rather than uh, make divisions. Uh, the next thing is, if anybody feels like this, just to know that you are not on your own. And now more, now more than ever, it is vital to stick together and keep our eyes on Jesus. Especially when you feel trapped, quickly turn to God and ask for his help, his guidance and his peace. Uh, Psalm 86 says that God delights in listening to our prayers and in us coming before him with humble and open hearts. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and read verses five to seven of Psalm 86. It says, For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my plea for grace. In the day of my trouble, I call upon you, for you answer me. Um, so I, yeah, I found this psalm um, particularly felt helpful during this time, and hopefully you will also. And lastly, prayers. I would really value your prayers for discernment while job hunting, if that's what the Lord wants me to do. Uh, then for my brother's final year in college, and lastly for my family back in Ecuador, all the way to the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> Um, sorry, the Atlantic, my geography is not great. But, so, yeah, thank you. And that's me. Oh, thank you, Caddy. Wonderful and lovely words and, and uh, great verses. Thank you. Let me pray for Catty and, uh, and then we can uh, hear, from, hear from Joan. Um, Father, we thank you so much for Catty. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for her commitment to you. Thank you that she is uh, a child of yours who you love dearly. We pray for her, Lord, as she's separated from her family by thousands of miles um, and that during this time that you bring her the comfort she needs and her and her brother um, would know you close and they'd be able to stay connected to the wider family. We, uh, we pray for, um, for the things she asked for, for, for prayer for, for, for the job, um, for her brother's final year, 
um, and for her family in general. We, we pray you, as she read in those Proverbs, that as they make plans, that you would establish their steps in all these areas. So thank you for her, Lord, and thank you that we can know more about her and care for her uh, by understanding her more. So bless her this weekend. Uh, and for those, Lord, that heard that story and different things resonated, may you be touching their hearts and blessing them too. In Jesus' name. Amen. Wonderful. Well, now it's time to get to know Joan, and hopefully uh, she's going to be spotlighted, or both of us are, um, which is great. Um, so I just have four questions for, for, for Joan. Lovely to have you here, Joan. Thank uh, you. Tell us, first of all, as you know, without going on for a whole life story, who <laughs> are you and what do you do? Well, if you've watched the little video that Steve did, because um, I'm old enough that I've got a long story, but I work in the Irish Bible Institute, teaching mainly pastoral care and have the pleasure of having Vanessa in class at the minute. Um, and originally from County Antrim, that's where the accent comes from, even though I haven't lived there for a very long time. And yeah, I'm married with two grown up children, live in West there you go look we have uh katie young saying antrim yeah we have another antrim in the in the house um tell us what are your hobbies and what have you been doing during lockdown um still working still working with ibi thankfully and teaching on zoom like this um but hobbies um i when the weather's good i like to garden and gardening is very therapeutic i'll tell you more about that some other time um, and I like watching sport, not so much taking part now, but watching sport, uh, mainly on TV these days, and love board games, like murder mysteries, love quizzes on TV, keep my mind sharp. Yeah, that's, reading, I, yeah. There's been a couple of uh, comments in. One is, has Vanessa done homework for your class? Always, <laughs> always. Right, we know you're not supposed to lie, Joan. And the second question is, we heard you had a very troubled student. Um, I think he was called Matthew Baskin. Have you recovered oh. from having him in, uh, in you know, your class? No, it, it, it takes it takes a long time to get over him, we, doesn't it? We try not to talk about that. Yes. But then Emma came and did evening classes and gave another side uh, to the So it's like the medicine for the... Yes, I see. Yeah, I got it. Uh, good. Okay, um, two more questions. Why are you giving your weekend to be with us at Christ City Church? Because it's a real privilege to talk about God and his care. And I just so much want every one of you to know yeah, that you can care for others, but that's because God cares for you deeply. Mm. And final question, which again, we mentioned on the video, if people have seen it, but you yourself have, have had two bouts of depression uh, in different stages of life. And you've learned a bit about, I'm sure you're going to bring it in, but just to sort of maybe tell us a bit about that and what you learned about the church being or not being a caring community. I think that's one of the reasons I now teach pastoral care, because when I was a student, so when I was 18, and then um, after I had my first son, uh, first child, and depression, and that time it was quite severe. I think what I learned is that a lot of my friends, a lot of my Christian friends, either couldn't care or wouldn't care. And I just felt a lot of people panicked if I started to open up at all as though they were supposed to fix me, which I didn't expect, I didn't want uh, anyway. So yeah, that's, yeah. I'm not gonna be saying that I haven't about it, I don't think, but not tonight, but yeah, that made me think about the care that we can show to other people as believers. Mm. Wonderful, thank you. Um, great, well, we're gonna hear from, uh, we're gonna have the Bible passage read now and then we'll, we'll hand over to you so guys i'm going to share my screen again if you have a bible do turn to it you may want to also get your your notepad to the first session here why we care and uh, sharon is going to come and read uh, psalm 103 verses 1 to 14 over to you sharon praise the lord my soul all my inmost being praise his holy name Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins, heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit 
and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbour his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. Let's pray now for Joan as she comes to speak. Our Father, you tell us that your word is living and active and we need it to be alive tonight. You tell us that your word is breathed out by you and it's useful to teach us and encourage us and equip us and rebuke us and we need it to do all of that. We need you tonight and we ask that you would give us more of yourself. You know where we're at and you know the specific aspects of your character that we need to know, be reminded about, cling on to. So speak through Joan Equipper. You know all that she's prepared and we pray that you would use all of that and minister right into the parts of our lives that you know we need to hear from you. Strengthen and encourage us tonight, we pray, and be with Joan as she shares in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Sharon, and thanks, Steve. It is great to be with you, and it's nice to see some faces that I recognise um, on the screens. So we're going to be thinking this weekend about being a caring church, but it's very important that we start with the foundation of, well, why do we care? And I'm going to talk to you about that. But firstly, I think it's good if you think about it. So I think maybe just for five minutes, Vanessa, if you can put everybody into breakout rooms, and I simply want you to think the answer to that question. And don't just say, because we're believers. <laughs> Think more, why actually do we care? Why bother? Why do we care for others? Okay, thinking specifically of other believers, but then that reaches out to everybody. Okay, and you can record some of the reasons you come up with. So do talk because you haven't got very long, as many reasons as you can come up with. Okay, thanks, Vanessa. So we have two people, Greg and Rebecca, who have been selected by our, our power hungry Vanessa. Um, so we'll go for Greg first, if you're able to share Greg, just something that your group discussed why we care. Sure. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, we had a range of answers. Um, so why do we care? Uh, mainly because, you know, he loved us, right? So, um, yeah, it's just great to fix you know, all the love that we receive, you know, we just want to radiate that out because it is so strong. And, you know, the main point was, it's not about us, it's about him and that his love comes. And we kind of push that out from him and from the Holy Spirit. So yeah, a few other answers we had in our group was um, that we are a light in the world, that the world might not care and we might feel the world doesn't care, but we can care, we can make a difference because of God's love um yeah so so we can make that difference it's really encouraging and also we're, we're stewards of the world as well um so yeah it, it is up to us it's our responsibility to show we care as, as, as you know god has cared for us and as humans we do crave relationships and you know we, we crave that love as well from other people so we want to show that love um as well as receive that love that, that we've received so um, I don't want to take all the answers up, so I'll stop there and hand over to Rebecca. Uh, yeah, no worries. Um, so, yeah, in our group, we were actually um, talking a lot about being made in God's image. 
um so made in the image of a god who really cares and loves us and so that is why even in our like non-christian friends and stuff we have we can see um how the egg too can be really caring and, and kind and um, and that's because um they too are also made in like god's image which is cool and um, we were also saying about how our world is broken um and so like caring kind of remedies that in a way and as maybe greg was saying shows god's goodness um in a broken world which is cool um and then we were also talking about because um like who jesus was um when he was on earth he was uh, caring and kind and good and loving and um he cared for people and invested in them and so being caring as a church is a way we can um invest in people and and love them well and another thing which wasn't really um just as a church but we just said sometimes you care because you think it's like a good thing to do like inherently in us and um, maybe that links back to like that idea of like god's image and who he's made us to be but probably to the non-christian like it's just a good thing to to do in that respect so that was all we said That's great. Thank you. That is really wonderful. And um, I'm sure the rest of you said similar things and maybe some other things that you're maybe um, recording. So I just want to talk to you and you'll see that I'm saying some of the similar things. Talk to you about why we care. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and um, hopefully you will see the PowerPoint. Can you all see that? Great. Um, if you see me glancing over to my right, it's because I like to see you when I'm talking to you. So you're all in front of me and the PowerPoint is over to my right. So I can, well, it's not so that I can watch and see if you fall asleep or anything. It's just so that I like to have that visual content. So first, the reason why we care and um, you said it, and that's because, hang on, it's because the character of God and who God is, and you were saying that. And just a couple of pictures of who God is. Um, in scripture, we have a lot of pictures of God as shepherd. Um, and that's a wonderful picture of God's care. And if you read through, one of the reasons, I'm not referring just to Psalm 103. There's going to be quite a bit of scripture, but it's all going to appear on screen. So you can see it easily enough because I'm hopping about the Bible a bit. But one of the reasons I wanted uh, Psalm 103 read, and thanks Sharon, is because it's Genesis to Revelation is where you read about God's care. It's right throughout the Bible. And one of the pictures that goes right through the Bible is about God as shepherd. And there's a wonderful um, bit from Psalm 78. He brought his people out like a flock. He led them like sheep through the wilderness. He guided them safely and then note this, so they were unafraid. That's just beautiful, so that they would be unafraid, but the sea engulfed their enemies. So God care for us. And then of course, um, we all know Psalm 23, the Lord is our shepherd. And beautiful picture all through that Psalm of God's care for us as shepherd. So as well as the picture of God as a shepherd in scripture, we also have the picture of God as the perfect parent father and mother interesting because in psalm 103 which sharon read in verse 13 it says as a father has compassion on his children so the lord is compassion on those who fear him and i wonder when you're thinking of god and thinking of what god thinks of you do you say to yourself the lord has compassion on me bible says it and then a wonderful picture of God also as mother. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. And you will be comforted over Jerusalem. So a picture of God as the perfect parent. So a picture of God in scripture. And that's we're living for God. So as God is like a shepherd and as God is like the perfect parent, then we have that beautiful picture and one of my favorite verses in all of scripture is this about God's care he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge 
any of you who teach children and teach children in the church, never underestimate what they take in. When I was a child, I don't know what age I was, in a children's meeting of some sort, um, the person who was teaching showed this picture of a hen and then went on to tell a story about after an Australian bushfire. You might have heard this. Men were going through and were clearing the ground and they came across this dead hen that had been burnt in the fire and one of the workmen kicked the hen and what do you think ran out from under the hen? So you can't, I can't hear you. So I presume you're saying what the picture is going to show. How many chicks can you see by the way? Hold up your fingers. Who can see one, two, three, four? Yes, all in round the bottom. If you look for the legs, and I can remember as a child, now obviously the picture, it was being talked about in terms of evangelism. You know, God has provided safety, but we have to come under his wings to be safe. But that picture stayed with me. And I can remember even as a child thinking, I wonder, I pictured that mother hen knowing the fire, smelling that the fire was coming. And I grew up on a farm. So of course I know that hens can smell. <laughs> I don't know, but anyway. The hen knew the fire was coming. So the hen is going, come, 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 come in under my wings. And can you imagine some of those chicks going, I'm not going in under your smelly wings. It's a beautiful day I'm out in the sun. And sometimes even as believers, God is saying to us, come to me. Come to me, don't run away. And I love that picture. And here's an updated one of it that somebody sent to me through COVID. Can you see that? Isn't that remarkable? I love that. So I've been sending it around to various people. There's this bird and the chicks are right under the wings. That it says he will cover you with his feathers. He'll shelter you with his wings. And if the picture of the birds doesn't appeal to you, maybe this one will. Same idea. I also love lighthouses. Inside the lighthouse, you're safe no matter what the storm outside in the lighthouse. And in Christ, we are safe. So it's that beautiful picture. And that's the foundation we can't actually care for other people if we don't know that God really cares for us. The foundation of our care and in the New Testament, then we're told Jesus is the good shepherd. And all the pictures in the New Testament about Jesus being the good shepherd and the good shepherd lays his life down for the sheep and the sheep follow him. Why? Because we know his voice. And also God gives us eternal life and we will never perish. So that picture of God's care is carried right through the Old Testament, right into the New Testament. And just to ask you a question, if something has made you doubt the goodness of God, don't stay there. Go and talk to somebody. Because if you care for people, you're going to hear a lot of horrible stuff. And if you care about the world, you're going to hear a lot of horrible stuff. And if you can't hold on to the fact that God is good, then you're going to be just in difficulty. We need to hold on to the fact that God is good and he is good. Now, if any of you were very observant, um, no, I'll come back to that in a minute, um, but who was it? it was Rebecca said about one of the reasons why we care is because we're made in God's image. That's why everybody cares. Doesn't matter whether they're Christians or not. People care. One of the most interesting TV programs I've ever seen was about Northern Ireland. And it was years ago, but it, they took two men who had both been in prison for horrible crimes in the Troubles. And they were both released from prison. And they looked at them as husbands and fathers. And they were both two very kind and caring people. The image of God in people is marred, but it is still there. Because everybody is made in the image of God. And that's what gives us value. Now, can anybody 
think or know something that I like and something that I've got a few of and I collect, you can unmute yourself and tell me. Can you look behind me and see? See, one of the things about being on Zoom is you can look in people's rooms and have a good nosy as to what they've got in their walls. What can you see behind me? There's Ow. answers coming in on, yeah, there's answers coming in on the chat pane there, Joan Owls. Oh yeah, because I can't see that because I've got the PowerPoint and all of you. Sorry about that, folks. Sorry. It's, ma it's mainly owls that have been said. It is owls. Now, I don't have them normally there. Vanessa doesn't see them during class. I just put them all, well, not all, but I put some of them there. See, if I move my head, there's quite a few. But I have one owl that is my favorite one. And the one that I would be really, really sad if something happened to it. And it's this one here. Oh, there. Can you see that misshapen, funny looking thing? Can you? Its ears aren't even even. But if you look around the back, there's a name scratched on it. It says Paul. When my son Paul was seven years old, and they'd be horrified that I've shown this, but never mind. Um, when he was seven years old in school in England, they did pottery. And Paul came home and gave this to me. And to say that I was pleased is an understatement. I didn't even know that Paul had noticed that I liked owls. And when the teacher said to him, Paul, what do you want to make? He said, I want to make an owl. So that owl doesn't look the best, but that's my favorite and my most valuable one because of who made it. Don't compare yourself to other people. Don't waste your time thinking, oh, Lord, if only I was like somebody else, I could live better for you. I could, you know, God chose to make you as you. That's what gives you your value. And that's how you know that God cares. So God made people in his image. And that's why we care, because we're living as I think it was Greg said, maybe. <laughs> I can't remember what it was Greg or Rebecca said that we are actually living out to show to other people what God is like. That's very, very important. Now, it's natural to care. I don't want you to all end up like the centipede. Can you read that? I'll read it to you in case you can't. A centipede, a centipede was happy quite until a toad in fun said, pray which leg moves after which. This raised her doubts to such a pitch, she fell exhausted in the ditch, not knowing how to run. So in other words, once the poor centipede started thinking, right, which foot goes after which, it couldn't move, you naturally care. So I don't want to make it tonight that you become so thinking about it that you don't do what comes naturally. It is naturally for every person to care because we're made for God. So we care because we're living to please God and because God is a carer. It's also a command in scripture. The great commandment, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength and your neighbor as yourself. I don't know, I'm sure you do in church get these light bulb moments. Well, I had one at a conference way back when I was a student the guy who was speaking, he said, you know, most people read that as a command. And I'm thinking, well, that's exactly what it is. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength and your neighbor as yourself. He said, it's also a promise. You shall love the Lord your God because God does it through you. And that's why you care and never turn those two around. The love of God and receiving his love is the foundation for all your care of your neighbor or anybody else. So it's very important that we keep that in that order, that we love others because we love God. So it's a command, it's the character of God. And then um, Greg said, oh, sorry, there's another command. John 13, 34, 35. I find this passage disturbing. Jesus said, by this, everyone will know that you're my disciples. I'm part of a church, Dublin West Community Church in Clonsilla, near where we live. 
How do people, even without COVID, before COVID, how do people in Clonsilla see that we love each other? How do people around Christ City Church know that you love each other? Jesus could have said, by this, everyone will know that you're my disciples by the truth that you hold on to. And that matters. That's important. But Jesus said, by this, everyone will know that you're my disciples if you love one another. I do. I just find that very disturbing that that's what Jesus said. But then another reason why we another reason why we care for each other is because we're a body. And it was Greg who said that we crave relationship. And that's absolutely true. And it's one of the really difficult things for many of us through COVID is not being able to see people, not being able to have those relationships that we normally have because God made us to be a body. And when you become, when you come to know the Lord, you become part of the church of Jesus worldwide. And then you need to fit into a local expression of that. It isn't, will I join a church or not? It's you're part of God's church worldwide. And then you need to be in a local expression of that. So that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. That we are a body and you are connected to other people. So when this week somebody comes into your mind, somebody else is part of this church, God has put that in your mind for you to do something or do something to show that you care for them. So we're a body and we're interconnected and also because caring leads to growth for us all. That's how we grow in the way that we care for each other. I love this from Ephesians 4 and it's that picture of the body again. From him the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. I don't know whether you think you're like a hand or a foot or an ear or an eye. I love to think of myself as being like a supporting ligament. I just love that picture that God calls us to do that. Not seen, you can't see ligaments unless there's something badly wrong, but you can't see ligaments, but they need to work. So it's a lovely picture of us enabling the body to work as each one of us just plays our part. And that's a different part for each of us. So we're a body. Leads to growth for us all. And I was delighted when I read the little booklet that I got today because Stephen it quotes 2 Corinthians 1, 3 to 4 because I already had this down. Where does our care for others come from? How can we comfort other people? Because of the care and comfort that we receive from God. The father of compassion and the God of all comfort. Who comforts us in all our troubles. And Greg, you quoted that too, didn't you? I think. See? So that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort our rece we receive from God. It's got to be that link. And we'll talk more about that tomorrow. That we need to be receiving from God if we've got anything that we can give and care that we can give to others. And it's contagious. Because as God cares for us and we show that care to others, then we're encouraging them to care for others as well. So we can lead by example and we can encourage other people to care. And then this one. It is a powerful witness. That we. And we're back to John 13, 34 again, and I put it again deliberately. People need to know that we care. People need to see that we're authentic. And we don't just say that we think God is important or that we follow Jesus. But people need to see 
And it can be as a simple thing as knowing they can trust us and knowing if they tell something to us, they're not going to find it on Facebook or wherever, that they can trust us. Apparently, Theodore Roosevelt may not have said this, but on Google, it keeps saying that he said it, so I'm going along with that. But I've thought about this a lot over the years. Nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. Um, Stephen and I lived in England for 10 years, and then 1995, we moved from England to Thurlis in County Tipperary. And Thurlis in 1995 had very few people who hadn't grown up in Thurlis. So the fact that we had come from England and the fact that we both had Northern Ireland accents was, um, was just made us blow-ins. I don't know if you know the expression of blow-in, but then as one of my friends uh, who was from Kildare said to me one day, she said, Joan, don't worry. She said, I'm a blow-in. And I'm from Kildare, because if you weren't born and bred in Thurlis, you were a blow in. And eventually um, we got to know people in the community. And the only reason that people outside the church would come to things was because they got to know us as real people. I remember one morning at the school gate, one of the mums that I'd got to know said something to me. And she said, Joan, I'm telling you that. Um, because I know it won't go any further. And I went home thinking, what? How did she know that? And then it was as though, you know, God was saying to me, it seems such a simple thing, but people are watching you and people need to know that they can trust you. And um, you know the way you pray for opportunities, you know, to speak for God and that the other people would see Christ in you? I'll tell you another funny one from Thurlis where I nearly blew it, as it were, in, it, as God, in God's terms. Um, a lady I was getting to know, also called Joan, um, I bumped into her one day in the supermarket and she had started coming along. We had these evening ladies things in the church. We did all sorts of stuff and people would come. And she had come to some of these and she met me one day in the supermarket. She said, you know, Joan, I don't understand how you're so serene all the time. Well, I laughed. I said, Joan, that's not a word that my family would use of me. It's not a word I would use of myself. And do you know, honestly, it was as though I felt God tapping me on the shoulder going, excuse me, excuse me. And I said, oh, actually, Joan, if you see anything of that in me, then it must come from God. Do you know, I, I can't remember now what I said, something just very simple like that. But People need to see Jesus in us. And one of the ways they will see that is by us being truly caring people. Now, that's probably raised questions in you, which we will get to tomorrow morning about being um, careful in our caring. Because do you care for absolutely every need you come across? Do you care for every person you've ever met? We'll come back to that. But just for tonight, just to think about that, that why do we care? We care because God first loved us and because God cares for us. And if we keep connected to him, then we have got the resources to care for others. Basically, it's putting our faith into practice. Um, I tell that, I, I say to the other teachers in IBI, you know, pastoral care is just central because pastoral care is living out our faith. But it is, isn't it? It's showing other people what God is like. And it's also living as this body so that when one part suffers, the others suffer with it. And when one part rejoices, then the others rejoice with it. That God has given us this amazing ability to care for each other wisely. And we'll think about that more in the morning. So think on about how we care, but hold on to that foundation that the reason we care is because God is a caring God and God by the Holy Spirit is living in and through us and showing other people his love and care through us.
Amen. Amen. Thanks, Joan. Uh, let me pray to finish, guys, and uh, and then there's going to be a little song. Uh, if you want to head off and enjoy your Friday, you can. But if not, there'll be a chance for a Q and A with Joan. She's around to stay, and then tomorrow morning. Before I pray, uh, let me just remind you of a few things. Um, there's yeah, so there'll be a song and a Q and A. The Paddler. I saw Spanters and I forgot to go there. They are brilliant. So can I ask you guys, because just we're trying to think about how we can do community engagement uh, while we can't be together. Uh, so if you could just go into the Padlet and maybe that was the thing, the question uh, that, uh, that, that, um, that, that Hannah's put there, share your thoughts from our first session. So go in there just quickly, even while the song's playing in the background now, it'd be lovely to see that populate with some more, some more answers. Um, so it doesn't have to be why we care, it can just be anything else. So why don't we, when, when, the, when the last song goes, why don't you just take two minutes to write something that God has uh, put on your heart or something you found helpful. Do be thinking about that photo challenge for tomorrow night for Hannah. Uh, you've got the three themes. Um, so uh, do, uh, do, 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 do do that. Think how you can bless your buddy. And then tomorrow morning at 9.30, there's a sort of optional prayer and worship. Any time to sing. So you can even have it in the background as you're doing breakfast with the kids or whatever. Craig will be leading us and Rebecca will, will kick us off with a devotion. So prayer and worship. And then the next session with Joan goes straight after that at 10.30. So let me pray. We're going to listen to a song uh, right on the Padlet. And then there's a chance for Q&A uh, afterwards. Father, we thank you that you are the God of all compassion. And you comfort us so we can comfort others. We thank you, Lord, that we're made in your image and you are a caring God. We thank you, Lord, that your character is a, uh, of a God who has compassion on children and a shepherd who protects the flock. We thank you that with our command to care for one another, there's a promise that what you give us, we can pass on. We thank you, Lord, that you've made us a body and that we therefore are integrated together. And when one suffers, we all suffer when one rejoices, we all rejoice. We thank you that as we care for each other, it leads to growth. That This is how we grow together, the unseen ligaments that are at work as we care for one another. We thank you that it's contagious, and that as we care for as you care for us, we care for others, and then that passes on to others. And we do pray, Lord, that as we learn this weekend, and as you put deep in our DNA that we are a caring church, it would be that powerful witness that we'd be an authentic church that people can trust and find refuge in. So thank you for what you've started to teach us and bless us uh, for the rest of this weekend. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, guys. We're going to have uh, a song. Find the Padlet and stick around uh, for Q&A uh, if you'd like to. <laughs>